Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang of the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and of the Frederick Health Hospital. Today, we're going to talk about a case of acute left main occlusion after a normal stress test. Our patient is a 55-year-old man with hyperlipidemia. He had to go a yearly stress test for his job. He got up to stage three of the Bruce protocol, reached 90% of the maximum predicted heart rate, and achieved 10.2 METs. There were a few PVCs at peak stress, uh, but there were no ischemic ECG changes. Uh, his cardiologist wished him well and uh, sent him home on his way. Shortly after that, uh, he uh, collapsed in the parking lot outside of the office. Uh, fortunately, he received immediate bystander CPR. Uh, he got one shock uh, from the AED and five to 10 minutes of chest compressions before ROSC. Uh, the ECG after ROSC showed sinus tachycardia uh, with lateral ST elevations. Um, once, he's, once he got to the ER, he was uh, profoundly hypotensive uh, with blood pressures in the 60s. And on the way to the cath lab, uh, he developed ventricular tachycardia and had to be cardioverted. On diagnostic angiogram, the left main was 100% occluded at the ostium. Now, this is not something that you see every day. We quickly passed a BMW wire through the occlusion and performed angioplasty with a 3.0 millimeter balloon. There was a partial recanalization after POBA. Uh, there was a thrombus uh, throughout the left main, the LED, and the diagonal branch. Uh, there was also evidence of likely acute plaque rupture uh, in the left main. We deployed a 4.0 by 33 millimeter drug loading stent from the left main into the LED, uh, gelling the circumflex. Uh, there was better flow after the first stent, but there was still residual lesion uh, at the ostium of the left main. We therefore went ahead and placed an overlapping 4.5 by 12 millimeter DES at the ostium of the left main. After the uh, second stent uh, went in, we had a reasonable result from the left main into the LED. And uh, at this point, uh, we went ahead and placed a balloon pump. Um, Impella uh, was not available at this hospital. The uh, left circ was uh, patent, uh, but the ostium was pinched uh, by the left main stent. Um, and there was actually some thrombus that had uh, embolized into the distal OM. Uh, the RCA, which is uh, not shown, uh, was quite large and uh, without disease. So here's the final angiographic result, uh, which is uh, reasonably satisfactory uh, considering his uh, dramatic uh, presentation. Uh, the patient was then immediately transferred uh, to a tertiary center for Impella and ECMO. Now, we know intuitively that the prognosis for acute left main occlusion is uh, quite grim. Um, a study in uh, 2003 showed that uh, for those patients with uh, acute left main occlusion who make it to the cath lab, uh, the in-hospital mortality rate is close to 60%, and the MACE rate is even higher, uh, even with rapid reperfusion. Now, this was just a small study, a uh, single center of just 24 patients. Uh, I am not aware of any larger case series, and I, I suspect that that is because most uh, acute left main occlusion patients uh, do not even make it to the cath lab. Take home messages. First, as much as we cardiologists take them for granted, stress tests are not benign. This case uh, is a dramatic illustration that STEMIs are caused by acute plaque rupture and thrombosis, and that plaque rupture can still happen even after a normal stress test. Sometimes they may even be triggered uh, by the stress test. The uh, prognosis of acute left main occlusion is very grim. Uh, most patients do not even make it to the cath lab, but it can happen. Survival depends on very rapid reperfusion, and it is perfectly okay to stent from the left main into the LED right across the left circumflex. Most of these patients will be in profound cardiogenic shock, and the outcome may hinge on rapid mechanical circulatory support. Thank you for watching.